Hello everybody, today I am going to demonstrate how to program an ESP8266 12E uh, using the Arduino IDE. And what we're going to do is create a little real world application. This is actually the finished product right here uh, using this little module. Um, these things are similar to an Arduino, they're programmable and you can use them to do different things uh, turn off and on a variety of switches and read analog signals which is what we're doing here uh, basically this is reading the soil moisture and it's turning on this RGB LED that I've got there and right now it's red telling us that this soil is very dry so I'm going to add some water to it in a little bit and Hopefully we'll watch that go through its color cycle, which would be green for in between, and then it would go blue for wet. Right now it's in the very dry stage. Before that we do that, I'm going to go over the code a little bit and uh, show you how this is all set up. Alright, so I wanted to show you what this looked like uh, sort of in pieces. I created a little shield for this thing, and uh, this one is the, yeah, well, there you go. That's the, which one it is. And here is the moisture sensor, sensor module, so to speak, that you could use with your Arduino or with your ESP board right here. So I created this little board uh, with sockets so that I could just plug this thing in. That way, if I want to use this for something else, um, I can. I don't have to have it soldered to the board. There's the, some of the solder connections I did, connecting the pins and the power where they need to be. And you can look at the schematic uh, if you want to see what that's all about. This also has this little resistor here. It's a little potentiometer that will vary uh, the signal that is being put out. <clears throat> which I believe is for the digital out, which I am not using. And as you can see here, I am using the analog, ground, and voltage. This is a neat little uh, module. It works with three volts. And these little LEDs will turn on when there's power. And the another LED for the on-off, which you could use to control a, I don't know, a, a relay or something like that, a switch, if you wanted to do that. Uh, so anyway, so that's what it looks like all broken down. I've got my ESP all put back together and the probe is back in the soil. And the soil is very dry. It's registering uh, with a red LED flash. And now I'm going to go over the code a little bit. Um, got some comments here at the top just kind of describing the application a little bit. Uh, one of the things you want to note uh, when you're setting up your ESP module, you might have to change your options up here for the board. I'm using Node MCU10 for the ESP12E module, and my programmer setting is USB Tiny. And I like to use uh, 1100 or uh, 115200 as my baud rate, which is something you're, you're going to have to note. Uh, when you use the, the uh, serial console, you want to make sure that matches, otherwise you're just going to get garbled characters. Alright, you're also going to need this library here. <clears throat> and I'll provide information on how to obtain that library in the Instructable, so you might want to check that out. I'll get down into some of these properties and settings of the application. This is going to be your SSID and the Wi-Fi password so you can get connected to your network. And we are going to define our pins for the red pin, green pin, and blue pin of the RGB LED that we're, we are using. And we also have a variable for the Wi-Fi strength. Write down some uh, settings to get uh, connected. We're going to use be a Wi-Fi server, basically a web server, on port 80. And... We're going to start the serial up so we can send information to that for debugging. And setting up our pins for to be output pins. 
I'm going to be turning those off and on depending on the value we get from our analog uh, sensor. Now this is just setting a color for the LED while everything is uh, initializing and getting connected. And then we're going to start printing to a serial port. So you can also open up your COM port and see what's going on. I'll go ahead and do that. There's the serial monitor. And as you can see, it's uh, telling us um, some different values. And it's actually saying that the web client has connected and disconnected. So what that means is the web page has just refreshed. I'll show you that right now as well. So I've got this little web page here. Uh, so when you access the web server be, via the IP address, which is uh, right here, uh, it prints this out. So it takes the values that it's getting from the sensor and uh, it's also, you know, some of the other values you can get from it, like the Wi-Fi signal strength. This is the, the raw value, so it's really dry right now. Um, that's going to go down as it gets more moist. And this is the actual voltage that it's reading on the, uh, the probe. Uh, and I use a little equation to get that. I'll show you later in the code. Well, let's do a refresh here. Let's see what happens. It's probably going to be exactly the same or close to it because it's just dry. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a little water. See if we can get these values to change a little bit. See there. Add a little bit of water here and there around the probe. And see what happens. This little gauge chart is Google Charts free. And it just uses some JavaScript. And that's all being uh, uh, written out in the code. I'll show you that a little bit later as we go. And uh, we're waiting for a flash. It was red before, and it should go. Oh, now it's blue. So it's all the way up to uh, what will be the green section of this graph. Or it could be right around the edge of it. Find out. No, we're right in the green, as you can see there. So uh, it's working. We bypassed the actual green LED. You know, I'd be using the same colors, but they don't have blue for this chart. You have to use yellow. And uh, you could uh, set the LED to do a yellow color, but it's not like a true yellow color. It's a combination of the colors, and I don't know. It just didn't look true enough for me, so I just made the color solid. Anyway, you can play around with that all you want in the code. Uh, it is set up to use PM, uh, PWM, Pulse Width Modulation. So you can create any color combination that you want. And as you can see, we'll do another refresh just to see where it is. That moisture, that water that I poured around the probes is probably gonna spread out a little bit. And it might start getting a tiny bit drier here. And uh, who knows, by the end of this, it might even be reading in the, uh, the midsection here. Anyways, let's go back to the code and continue on. We don't have a whole lot to go over, but I will let you know what's going on here, especially if you're just getting started, it might help. All right, so when we set up the Wi-Fi, I like to set up my IP address. If you comment out this line, it will use DHCP. And then you, you gotta make sure you have the serial monitor open because when it first connects, it'll tell you what the IP address is. But I like to set the IP address myself because um, otherwise, like if your router power goes off or it disconnects, it can end up with a different IP address every time, and then you gotta find out what it is. And I'd rather just know what it is and have it set. Anyways, uh, this is how you do it. This is the IP address, this is the uh, gateway, and this is the subnet mask. Keep on going down here, and we're just printing out uh, some information. This is where it prints out the IP address that you can use in the browser to uh, see the data there. These are just some storage uh, values, the analog value, the analog volts, and a time holder. Uh, and we get into our loop function. So first we're going to pull the uh, Wi-Fi adapter and see what the signal strength is. This could be helpful just in debugging if you want to 
you know, you know if you're too far away from your Wi-Fi router it might not work and here's just the analog value it's getting it uh, through the A0 pin on our ESP and that's connected to the uh, moisture sensing module and uh, we're getting our volts using this equation here it's all explained in the comments so I'm not going to go over it in real detail but that's how I'm getting my voltage value and I, I used a multimeter to test it and it was dead on with my multimeter so you can play around with that if you need to and then we have our chart value here this is basically a value that can be used by that Google chart it wants a value between uh, I think 1 and 100 and so that just takes the the raw value that we have which is between anywhere from 0 to 1024 but in our case uh, it kind of maxes out at 400 when it's totally dry it's around 400 so anyway this is the equation that gives us that chart value that uh, is you know within the reasonable range of wet and dry and this is a uh, time holder this is basically controlling the uh, the blink so you now right now it's every 10 seconds I'll probably change this to 15 just because it uses less power that way not that it uses much at all believe me these things are three volts and are hardly <laughs> using any power at all anyways uh, that controls the blink and you get down here this is controlling um, what LED to turn on depending on the chart value so less than 25 and we're going to go red and in between is green and above 75 is going to be blue for wet and this is the duration of the LED so if you want it to blink right now it's one second it stays on and it shuts off you can play with that if you want and now we're getting down to print out those serial values that I showed you earlier with the serial monitor show you again real quick that's where those values are being printed out and we get down here we'll get into the HTML that is being sent to the client when it's requested now the HTML that's being sent to the client as a response it's all right here so you're basically just writing out all the HTML just like a regular HTML page um, and sending it to the client and in this case we're using some JavaScript from Google to create our chart and this is where we inject our chart value into the Google JavaScript and I also changed the name to moisture I had some other name in there and this is where you control the colors of the chart where uh, the colors are going to be where it's going to be red from 0 to 25 yellow from 25 to 75 and green from 75 to 100 as you can see in the little chart so that's how those regions are defined and keep on going down here and the chart value this is just showing you that actual number on the web page right here 78 so that's the actual chart value right there let's do a refresh and see where we are it's probably pretty close to the same yeah all right now as we go down uh, we get into the little bit of html that uh, actually shows the chart this is our heading we're going to create a little table where we uh, put those those different values in there that are displayed on the page a little refresh button and the div uh, for the google chart and that's it uh, it's not a whole lot of html it's pretty simple and uh, anyways should help you get started uh, using an esp8266 they're really neat modules um, they allow you to do a lot in fact, I'm probably going to upgrade this one and uh, add a small buzzer to it and also add some properties to the code and save them to the uh, memory so that uh, you could actually turn off and on the LED if you don't want the LED to show at all. And same with the buzzer. So that would probably be in a version 2 or so of this uh, 
particular application. But anyways, this should get you started using the ESP with the Arduino IDE.